Hello, everyone. I'm probably sounding terrible, but uh, welcome to episode 23, I want to say. Sounds about right. Of Bras, Bitches, and Balls. Lee is in Mexico. Mexico on a beach. On a beach, so that's nice. Um, I'm here loathing winter because still, uh, you know, coldness. Uh, this is Nick, as I'm sure you know. Uh, today we have Rita Hopkins, Yo. who will be talking about Hi, various Rita. things. Hello. And we have Lisa, who in addition to have questions, also has a bar of the week, which sadly we can't show you because we have a bunch of technical issues with the live video. But we'll put up a picture on the page so that you can see what uh, we're talking about. Yeah, and it's, it's a, uh, hi everybody. Um, also, not only do I have questions, but I have a story about how I am super cold because I don't have heat in my fucking house right now. Mm. So, um, I'm either going to freeze to death or cause a massive explosion, one or the other. Um, so the bra of the week, sorry you guys won't be able to see it, but it's not a, a pretty bra, but it is an amazingly functional bra. It's, uh, and it's not truly a bra i guess it's a compression bra um it's called bra 30 i'm going to show rena so this is uh it comes in multiple colors I'm recording here oh hey look yeah you can see this here <laughs> see we do have a video okay, but it won't be a live Facebook video live. Yeah, so it'll be on youtube instead oh youtube okay so this is a compression bra it's called a bra 30 um and it's essentially like a, a t-shirt bra it's very stretchy and it's one of those bras that if you don't really, you, you want to lay around on a Saturday or you just want to run to the grocery store or something where you don't want to have to get everything everywhere. You just kind of want to chill, but you're worried about people coming to the door or, you know, a nephew visiting or whatever. You don't want to, you don't want to be completely exposed. You can throw this on and it is awesome. It's just a little, a little support so that, you know, if you need the support for pain reasons whatever it gives you some a, a little bit of compression but it's not super uncomfortable there's no underwire there's just some elastic in the um in the bottom part, See, I, the band part i like that it looks a little longer than your average just like a sports bra kind of thing it looks like it would fit a little nicer under clothes and give yeah. you kind of a nice lean look yes and it's it's definitely one it's not as like supportive as the sports bras that that busted carries but it does give you a, a little bit more you're right it, it kind of goes a little bit lower than just right under the breast yeah um and yeah it's just nice for like i said chilling around the house but you kind of want to have something you know you're out gardening or whatever and you don't want to be sagging or <laughs> good morning fedex guy <laughs> exactly <laughs> hi swing <laughs> um so i love this uh and this one is actually my personal one because I didn't make it down to the store to pick one up. But I love this bra and I just happened to dig it out of a, you know, a, a bin of clean clothes that I have not oh, put okay. away. Okay, I was just picturing you, you know, just whipping it off in the car. Right. The like, like, oh, let's oh just my take this God, off. I forgot. Wait, hang on. No, I am actually wearing a Matilda uh, today on. Uh, so a, a real guess underwire that's a style bra. Of bra. It is. Okay, it's a good. very pretty bra. We featured a couple of times in a couple of different colors. I have the yeah. beige one on, but it's a. It's a regular bra bra with underwire and everything. Um, the compression bra, I, like I said, I've worn it out to, you know, the grocery store running around, that kind of thing where um, I'm not worried about, you know, how it's going to fit under a dress or anything. I'm just throwing a sweatshirt on. I <laughs> just want to get going. Um, and and uh, also, like I said, doing yard work and stuff like that where it's like if you're on your knees and digging holes and things, you don't really want to be sagging around and in my youth that was never a problem because i was super flat chested <laughs> but what happened now, not so you? much i know in my 30s i got boobs um all right it was very weird so i uh, also gained a lot of weight so i'm gonna go oh. with it was all of my boobs <laughs> <laughs> so that is it uh so we always feature a bra of the week to start because busted is our sponsor um and a couple of things about busted they are still featuring the brides of march uh, sale and also I think we mentioned this before but they do um, take layaway old school layaway yeah so if you want it's a to relatively new thing but yeah, yeah if you want to so buy sure. something uh, because some of the stuff that that Lee carries is uh, fashion colors so they're only available for a certain amount of time 
And so if you're, you know, a hard to find size or something like that and you want to grab something, but you're like, I can't really afford it right now. I got to wait till my next paycheck. You can put it down. I was it twenty dollars. I think it's twenty dollars down. Like ten that, is yeah. and ten then, is non-refundable. So there's a right. restocking fee if you don't purchase it. Um, and that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to get anything wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> but so that is it. And then Lee is um, enjoying her time on a beach in Mexico, and I hope having a pina colada for me while I am freezing my ass off. Um, but we also are opening a Chicago store. Rena, I don't know if you knew that, but no, we are opening in that. Hyde Park in April, nice. hopefully. we. Uh, mm-hmm. So once Lee gets back, she's going to have to run down to Chicago and start getting that together. We've got the keys and are working on getting that open. So lots of interest there from the Chicago peeps to have mm-hmm. something that carries a wide variety of of sizes and fashions um, for everyone. I'm in Chicago all the time. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, you will. Um, I'm hoping that we'll have a fun um, grand opening, you know, post-actual opening where we have a little party. Um, That'd be nice. And (laughs) it's, you know, just down the road from where the Obamas live. Oh, we can... In theory, in theory, there's Mm -hmm. like, you know, three potential, you know, uh, clients Mrs. Obama, please bring... Malia and Sasha, Sasha and yourself on down. Yeah. Um, that'd be pretty exciting. <laughs> that would be nice. That'd be epic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's going to be happening soon. Um, but while she's gone, while Lee is away, uh, we are going to play. We're going to talk. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, ha- we have our guest here today, uh, Rena Hopkins. Hello again. It, hello again. Is... Um, Yeah. Various multifaceted artist, yeah. dog <laughs> adopter, and uh, promoter of dog adoption dogs. and dogs and dogs and dogs and, and dogs. Dogs and art and dogs, dogs and, and art. art and yeah. Dogs and art. Okay, yeah. so we're yeah. going to be besties. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You said four dogs. I I'm have like, yeah, hello. four of them, and I had to turn the heat off when I got it started today so that if the house explodes, it doesn't do it while they're right. home alone. Because if I blow up with them, I guess it's okay. Yeah, well, you know. Well, at least you all go together at that point. You yeah, know, it's like it'll be like The Shining, but you know, it'll be uh, another movie I've never seen. Oh god. Okay, so <laughs> I, I'm, we are I'm kin. today. Today I'm actually in the studio movies. with people who haven't seen an awful lot of my reference points. I did so see a Wrinkle fun. in Time though. Oh, cool! It was was it beautiful. Good? It was one uh, of the most beautiful movies i've seen in forever like the color the one i didn't know reese witherspoon was in it because every course everybody knew oprah was in it right Right. and then um i had seen some things that mindy kaling was in it yes Mm -hmm. um and then so like the the first person who shows up i'm like is that reese witherspoon holy shit that's reese witherspoon (laughs) (laughs) who i love in big little lies Mm -hmm. um so it yeah it was just gorgeous it was i really want to mesmerizing and i'd heard like meh and it was one of my favorite books growing up. Right. And I don't even remember yeah. anything about it. I'm like, now I got to go back and read the book because right. I don't remember I'm anything. I just remember it was one of my favorite books. Was it good as well as beautiful? Yes, it okay. was. I really enjoyed it. So I'd heard like mixed reviews and everybody was like, Black Panther, Wrinkle in Time. And of course, two black producers. Is that who we directors? Directors, producers. It's, yeah, di- it's, yeah, it's so, you know, it was like hit them against each other kind of thing and like Black Panther's um, better than Wrinkle in Time blah 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 we think you have time more than one gorgeous yeah I, 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 I know I think, like I think, completely I think, different I genres exactly exactly, exactly. And it's, it's like it's arguably, arguably, it's about and it's about fucking time we could time, actually support you know, like, both I'm, and that would maybe be maybe even more than two yeah, I'm, maybe. Uh, I'm going to say knows? maybe we should just make it a normal thing yeah. where, uh, where we don't even notice that where we it's don't a black have to be directed like, produced hey, film because yeah. it's just something that happens all the right. time. It's not yeah, new. That, yeah. that, could, be a, that right. could be a good place to be. So I don't know much about Ava DuVernay. You probably do because you're more of a movie person. Um, I know that she's going to be doing. I think her next she's project. She's doing a comic book movie, isn't she? Yeah, she's going to be doing New oh, Gods, is which is... Um, So anyone who's paid attention to the Marvel movies will see that there have been a lot more cosmic-themed ones coming of late. I haven't paid attention to. Like, you know, Guardians (laughs) of the Galaxy, Ragnarok, Mm. that sort of stuff. It's all set in space. Damn it, Janet. So 
those films exist because the comics that they come from were in a large part created by a guy called um, Jack Kirby. And Jack Kirby um, didn't look unlike how uh, Jeff Goldblum looks in, uh, in Ragnarok. He was kind of like, you know, a sort of like dapper little old, older silver foxy kind of dude. I didn't know Jeff Goldblum was in Ragnarok. <gasps> Again, a movie I haven't seen. Okay. All right. Well, so anyway, you can get if away you with like, that by if... just not telling people, just smile. Yeah, no. yeah you That's just great. smile. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, just like Jeff I was Gold just waiting for you to say Goldblum in the which fly. Is a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is well, a movie. so a Jack thing. Kirby, Jack Kirby, uh, didn't get treated very well by Marvel, and went to DC, <sighs> and created a thing which was basically like, basically like the Thor comics, but. An entirely new universe with new gods, hence the name, new gods. Hmm. And people have always wanted to do this. And I've always thought it's really sad that Jack Kirby died. Obviously, it's sad when people die. But it's sad that he died before no, these movies everyone. came up because <laughs> he should be the one who's doing the wacky pa uh, cameos uh, in, like, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. yeah. It shouldn't really be Stanley because Stanley basically took, like, what Kirby did and went, like, yeah, that's great. Let's add some color. I, I, I yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have the majority share. Uh, thanks, Jack. Um, we're not going to treat you well. So, uh, see you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Huh. So, but, so Ava DuMartin is directing that you got what has up. she done in the past though like i know she's famous for having done a couple of things you know I prior to a wrinkle I, in time I don't know. That's but i don't know you don't it know is. i yeah. know i don't know i should I really mean, now know I, this it makes sense that we don't know because yeah. clearly yeah, we've established clearly, that we do not watch you know movies. what had i known <laughs> this question was be. coming i would <laughs> i would Google totally it. have looked this up <laughs> but i liked i liked a wrinkle in time i understand why there were some things missing from the movie so the one thing i missed from it is the fact that the the three uh who which and what's it um they start out looking one way and then they change in the book that didn't happen but i can understand why because when you're paying for the three people you're yeah. already paying for. <laughs> you want to keep Oprah's face on that screen. Yeah, <laughs> you so might not. My understanding of that is that um, they did minor makeup changes and costume changes to, right. to try and yeah, yeah. Which yeah, costume changes? That. The costumes were gorgeous. Uh, the hair was beautiful. Reese Witherspoon does actually. She does do that. She one does transformation one con uh, conversion transformation, which again was one of the most beautiful scenes it, it, it was just did it look like sailor moon <sighs> no no although i would totally be down for a sailor moon type <laughs> thing with reese with a spoon that would be kind of funny i think that would um, be that would be great but yeah it was it was gorgeous i would go see it again and i don't see movies that often um but uh, my sister and i my birthday's friday uh-huh um, happy birthday Thank you. So uh, my sister is coming down to visit, uh, and we are, the reason I have not yet seen Black Panther is because she and I are going to go see that together. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Um, and at least the theater will have heat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you hope. I you hope. hope. Yeah. So my and the theater has reclining chairs and a bar. <laughs> So even if there's no heat, there's liquor. That is the best innovation in cinema. I know, isn't that amazing? For, for years. Like it's yeah. like, how did we not do this? But this before? was going on for years. I remember there was a, a a theater in Columbus back in the '90s that used to have beer and reclining like seats and food. I mean, it was it was a it was a total dive. I mean, it was you know the kind of place. I mean, I was there for Rocky Horror to give you an idea sure, of absolutely. how much food was ground into the seats of this oh theater that God. served food and beer. But, and you know, then you add toast and toast and, and rice, yeah, and, and prunes well, and yeah. all of the other things. And, uh, yeah. yeah, the fox, and used then the to beer do... just kind of soaked it all Ugh. in and made it into like a pate. Oh, oh nice! So it was just a kind of like perma layer of just uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm guessing that your theater that you're going no. to is going for more like the luxury yes, end of these this. These are more the luxury seating with the. Moving the yeah, seats back and forth. Have someone who I comes hope somebody wipes the seats shows. off every at, at, once at in least, a while. At least every other. But show. at least they're like they're not that <laughs> that like red cloth 
you know. Yeah. And you remember, like, the 80s, the big innovation was cup holders. And I still, back home, there's a movie theater. I'm from northern Michigan. They no cup, cup holders. holders. You have to put no your cup, cup holders. Down on wow. The, yeah. It's old school. So, mm. anyway, I'm, so I'm going to go see the Black Panther, but I would totally recommend uh, A Wrinkle in Time if you're a fan of, of the genre and that kind of movie. And, or just like um, pretty things. Or just things. like pretty things. It is really... Really pretty. Um, I, seriously, I was there with a friend, and I was just like, this is so pretty. And then she and I were laughing at parts, and nobody else in the theater were laughing. I'm like, "That's, dude, guys, that was funny. That is, that is my favorite thing in, in theater, in film, is when there's a joke that's fantastic, and you're laughing, and no one else is either willing to laugh out loud or gets it. Right. And then you're thinking, did I hear that wrong? Though I have to say, one of my favorite theater experiences was with my best friend. She and I went to see Little Miss Sunshine. Uh huh. And the dance at the end of Little Miss Sunshine. Oh, was she the? Su- is it Super she Freak? She da- oh. Was it? Su- I think it was Super Freak. Yeah. yeah. The entire theater was like cry laughing. It was so funny. <laughs> That's also a fun experience when like everybody's in on it and you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening right now. Yeah. I I always enjoyed watching Shaun of the Dead too oh, with Shaun the, the opposite. Because like there's a certain word uh we use a lot on this podcast, which amazes me. Um that is deeply offensive, um, beginning with C that doesn't oh, yeah. have the same I think it ends with U N T. I believe yeah, so. Yeah, it ends with U N T. Doesn't have the same cultural impact. Uh, here than it does in England. In England, we're a lot more free and easy with it because we don't use it as a pejorative kind of thing. Um, uh, and there's a bit right at the beginning where they're talking about how unpleasant Ed, uh, Nick Frost's character is, and his very first line is, can I get you cunts a drink? <laughs> and everyone mortified? in the audience is just dead uh. aghast and i'm laughing because i thought that was that was a really good timing of the joke <laughs> but i'm like oh okay so i'm the only british person in, in this, this entire, entire theater. theater everybody else is like offended for god knows why yeah exactly yeah. so we've talked about a bunch of movies um but let's talk to rena about yes. rena and uh, what oh she god. does so you i understand created a dog Rescue for senior dogs? I, I founded. Right? Oh, you <laughs> rescue. Founded. Created, founded. <laughs> for a second there, I thought you were asking me if I had created a dog, which oh. is one thing <laughs> like that I, I have one. not made. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen the lab. It's working. <laughs> I'm trying. Your, your I'm trying. It's alive. It's just no. not quite there. Yeah, Sleeping Dog Studio is a foster based, very small senior and special needs dog rescue. Aww. Um We've been around for about a year and a half, not terribly long. Is that right? Year and a half? Two years, September? Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. I'm sorry, say it again. Sleeping. Sleeping Dog Studio. Sleeping Dog so Studio. Okay. I, I have an art studio, and there are many old dogs sleeping in it. And I thought, aw, old dogs, Aww. they sleep. We'll call it Sleeping Dog Studio, <laughs> right? What a lovely thought. And then the first... We, I didn't even really have enough money to rescue a dog yet, but I'm already trolling. Like, I'm going to start a dog rescue. <laughs> I'm going to look for dogs in need. Now and I can hoard dogs. <laughs> Shh, that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> Don't say that loud enough. Dave can hear me. <laughs> like, so I'm trolling, and I see this this lovely senior Bassett. Oh my this God, Bassett beautiful Helms? picture. Yeah, this beautiful. It's just this little blurry picture of her, and she's sitting in a field, and something mm. about a senior Bassett mm. that needs rescue, and Don't what? Know. And I'm like, oh, I could take the dog, right? Right. So there's a huge fiasco trying to coordinate with another rescue, and we're not communicating well, and nothing's going well. And I, I get this dog. She's nine years old, which is senior. Mm-hmm. There is no sleeping. With this dog, oh, okay. she is the really best. She's she's batshit crazy. I want her. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Did you meet Noodles, Nick? I don't think I met Noodles. No, okay. I've, I've yeah. You've, you've met a lot of I've the dogs. Met a yeah. lot of them, but I don't think Noodles. Yeah. I've heard of Noodles. Yeah, she she lives in infamy. She's still she's still around. She's <laughs> she's a dog. That we lives need to post in a picture of Noodles. <laughs> I can find a picture of Noodles. I'm sure it's like no. a little a little <laughs> streak. Yeah. yeah. So. The uh, the the story of getting noodles. I uh, 
Do you mind if I tell the story? It's a little long winded. No, long-winded. no, oh, okay. no, no. It's tell fine. Long winded is fine. <laughs> oh, good, because I am. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I'm supposed to be meeting this girl. The noodles is in Toledo. And there's someone who's going to drive noodles to me. And she's going to arrive at like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I can do this. I can be up at two o'clock in the morning to receive a basset hound from whatever. Great, I got this. Totally fine. And this is my first rescue. I have no idea if this is normal or not. It, it's not. It's not. Um, <laughs> totally not. You know. So the the other rescue that's coordinating didn't want to give me this person's contact information. What? Whatever. So. It's like midnight, and I finally, the, the person contacts me. I'm going to be off work soon. I'm going to be leaving to bring the dog to you. I'm like, do you want me to meet you halfway? Because I'm, I'm awake, and I'm not doing anything, and that way you can go to sleep sooner, whatever. She says, sure, sure. So I'm like, you know, I get in the car. I'm halfway right, to Toledo. This sounds like you're going to get murdered. <laughs> I, I'm alive. Totally alive. You need to listen <laughs> to our murder discussions. <laughs> so I'm halfway to Toledo, and I get a message from her that says, I've lost the dog. What? <laughs> what, what? What do you mean you've lost the dog? Well, apparently, they had uh, they had waited for her to get off work from her shift at the tattoo parlor, and the dog had the, been tied up oh, outside oh. a house that she didn't really know, and she'd panicked. It was a warm day. Dog had freaked out, wrapped herself around a picnic bench a whole bunch of times. When they went to take her off of the leash to put her in the car she slipped her collar and bolted hi uh, beagles that's happened yeah right <laughs> so i drive all the way into toledo and we spend and now you're on a rescue mission now we're on a rescue mission it's like 2 30 in the morning the bars are letting out oh, i'm God. asking like drunk people who are stumbling <laughs> have home this? have you seen this what is it it's a basset hound a what it's a, a basset hound <laughs> it's a dog. It's a short dog with really long ears. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, she was running that way. <laughs> she was going so oh, fast. Or maybe that way. And the, yeah, and then you go to where the other people are like, oh no, man, she was down by the church. I think she was peeing on the porch. You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> right. So we're searching for this dog back and forth across this little neighborhood for like four hours. At some point in the night. The garage behind the house that she was tied to catches fire. <gasps> right. So there's like a four noodles story tall fire, and crazy. Noodles is going nuts around this neighborhood, running in circles. Poor noodles. Right. And I can't. <laughs> I give up at like 5 30 in the morning, something like that. The girl who's helping me look for this dog is just distraught. She's heartbroken. Also, oh, wait, her I would have been crying. Car is overseeding. Out overheating <gasps> like and, so like her car is smoking as we're doing circles trying to find the dog oh my God. <laughs> she's like and she keeps saying jimmy is gonna kill me I'm like who's, uh-huh. jimmy? Who's, who's jimmy who's jimmy <laughs> she's like you gotta call jimmy he wakes up at like six you just gotta tell him that that i that it's not my fault man it is so not my fault i didn't i'm like all the things things are getting really weird I'm like, she won't tell me who jimmy is if i so at six o'clock, I call Jimmy, and it, it turns out that Jimmy is like the guy who rescued Noodles' mom, and Noodles is kind of like his grandbaby. Oh okay. no! Jimmy also runs the tattoo parlor. Jimmy is so the Jimmy's boss, her boss. Her boss, the boss of the guy who had Noodles, who was releasing Noodles, the boss of the guy whose house Noodles was tied behind. <laughs> also, he's kind of big in this like bike gang. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You so don't I, mess with bikers who love dogs. No. <laughs> so at six o'clock in the morning, he wakes up and he calls all of his guys and like we do a shift change. And instead of me and this one terrified tattoo artist, there's now an entire Toledo worth of bikers <laughs> searching, their for, bikes <laughs> searching for the a deranged basset hound around this burned down. Oh. And they did find her and they called me. And I went and I got Noodles, who is batshit crazy. crazy. <laughs> who was sitting there with a can of gas and a <laughs> <box> of matches. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And she's she, like, she, <laughs> I'm just going to have to burn this place down. She, she <laughs> bolted like four more times. It was like the thing she did. She would, mm. she would get loose, and then once you found her once, she's, she's totally like, cool. This is a fun game. No, no, no. <laughs> Everybody who got her, anyone who had Noodles for a little bit of time, she would run away. 
And then once you found her, she's like, oh, cool, you do like me. Oh, I'll stay now. Yeah, it's like, it's this like is a test. test. It was yeah. her test. Yeah. yeah. Everybody leaves me. I'm going to leave you first. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, Noodles has, uh, we're going to say little canine dementia. Uh-huh. So she's terrified. She hates you. Who the hell are you, person who's up in my house in the morning? Bark, 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 bark. Oh, hey, You're like, Noodles, you. would you like some cheese? Oh, you're the guy with the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Lee feels cool. that way about my Rottweiler. <laughs> you put her outside. She comes back to the door and she's like, who the hell are you in my house? And you're like, I'm the guy with the cheese. Like, oh, yeah, the guy with the remember cheese. Remember me? Yeah. <laughs> so cool. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I grew up with um, my dad rabbit hunted. And uh, so we had hounds. We had hound dogs. We had a lot of beagles. But his best hunting dog ever was a beagle basset mix. Oh, bagel hounds are my Jody. heart. Jody. Jody the Bassett Beagle. And Jody um, stole a turkey carcass once and brought it into my bedroom. <laughs> and we lived in a, a mobile home, so the, there were no light switches. You had to like go into the room, crawl up on this built-in desk, and mm-hmm. switch the light on. Mm-hmm. And I did that and stepped on the turkey bone, and ah. it went into my foot. So ah. I, I had a constant memory of Jody until the little piece of bone popped out years later. Yeah, um, now I just have a little scar on my the arch of my foot, but also Jody would, um, she was stolen multiple times. People stole your bagel? Yeah, because, she, apparently because she was a good hunting dog, but what she would do is when she would go into the woods, she would not leave until she was ready. Okay. So my dad would say he he would put his coat out on the side of the road and he's like, he'd just go to the bar or whatever, have a beer, and she'd <laughs> go back, back a few and... hours later and she'd be lying on his coat. Aww. So, oh, um, yeah, and he's like, yeah, there was a neighbor. This is in a rural area, so neighbors are several miles away. Right. It's like, yeah, saw my dog, drove over there with my Jeep, and he's like, uh, it's not your dog. He's like, oh, yeah, Jody. She comes running. Mm-hmm. I don't know how she got into a Jeep, those little. <laughs> <laughs> They're surprisingly agile. Little otter legs. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, she jumps right in the car, and he's like, yeah, that's my dog. Bye. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so I have a huge love for beagles because of that. So I have two beagles now. <gasps> And also two Rottweilers, who are way sweeter than beagles. Beagles are assholes, but I love Aww. them. They're assholes, but I love them. I, 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 I'm, I disagree on the asshole front. <laughs> I, have, I have French bulldogs from <gasps> Dave. I want a right. French. Dave, Dave has French bulldogs, and I have hounds. I love hounds. Um, which gives you kind of a, a good, really snapshot into the dynamic of our relationship. It's basically a 16th century Versailles kind of now, like set up. I've been told that Frenchies are clown dogs. Clown dogs? <laughs> You're like, no, that's not it. As in they live Asshole in the clowns. gutters and they, they live in the drains and they lure uh, tiny children <laughs> down to... They're like Pennywise. That's on yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Who, who to me, Henri, just looks like he's got the coloring and until you can see his face... He, he have to post and pictures still, of these dogs. Yes, he still he does. Pictures. He looks like a breed of pig from from <laughs> England called a Gloucester Old Spot. He does. He, it's amazing <laughs> because, and he sort of sounds like a Gloucester Old Spot too. It's 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 amazing. Aww. No, I love. I mean, my dogs are assholes, but I love them regardless. Um, it's having having Rottweilers who actually listen to you, and when ah. I tell them things, they do it. Right. It's just so it's, weird to me. It's a different <laughs> like, kind of dog. I have a Rottweiler puppy who is about this tall. He's super tall and skinny. He's my little runway model. And I look at him and I'm like, go do X. And he'll go do it. Get out of my kitchen. He'll go out of the kitchen and he'll sit there. A very pretty sit. Aww. And he'll wait. He is mostly a vegetarian. He loves any fruit, vegetable, anything that you will hand him. He'll eat it. Um, my beagles... We try to hand them a piece of cauliflower. They're like, what the fuck is that? Right. <laughs> um, that's not meat, except when the Rottweiler eats it. Then they'll eat it just out of spite. Oh, sure. Right. right. Um, and so it's it's just so weird to me because they're so obedient and so good that I'm like, I li- what is wrong with me that I like these asshole dogs who are just like, yeah, no, not going to do that. Because they're more like little people. Yeah. They're like, I don't need to sit for you. Right. You got cheese? No cheese? No cheese. No fuck skin. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm trying. I have a, a beagle, bip beep. Um, a oh, what, yeah. what? Bip beep. Oh, that's his name. Yeah. Oh, bip beep. Bip beep. Okay. Bip beep. <laughs> and um, he's fat. Yes, he uh, is. No, well, most beagles are. Yeah. He's, Mine are not, but the most beagles he's, are. He's obese, and we're trying to teach him shake. <laughs> 
All I get is sit. Yeah, I, we got sit down. It took it took a year, but we got sit down. And shake works if I am holding his food bowl. <laughs> Not a treat. The whole the damn bowl. Whole. <laughs> <laughs> He's figured out, you know, that I'm not willing unless yeah. it's yeah, like, like that. The exchange I don't rate get out on a of shake bed is without not 50 grand. <laughs> right, like, right, yeah. right. The exchange yeah. rate on a shake is not one piece of kibble. Exactly. Yeah. It is and, a if, and if you try and shake the left paw, oh, that's too confusing. Oh, yeah. It's just. What the hell just happened? Why are you touching my foot? But I will yeah. say that beagles, one, don't make as much noise as people think that they do. No. Um, now, mine. Well, some of them do. Some of them do. Mine. Will bark and howl, but it's for a reason. It may be right. a stupid reason. Like there's somebody on their street in front of them, which is open to everyone. Right. Um, my younger one doesn't really bark at all, but he roos. His name is Ruger, so it's Aww. fitting. But he roos at the other dogs when they won't play with him. Oh. So that's usually the only time that he really barks. The other one is a mouthy. Yeah. But still not not as mouthy as people think. Oh, people have this concept that beagles and hounds in general are just Constant howling all barkers, the time. Right. And they, they really aren't, you know. No. And I, I, the other thing I love about them is that they are, um, you know, they're supposed to be hunters. The biggest thing they hunt is, like, what's under the covers. They are yes. big cuddle burrow, oh. like cover burrowers. So um, I have to fight with them about the blankets. Uh-huh. But it's awesome because they kick out heat more than any dog oh, like yeah. if you <laughs> if you have no heat <laughs> this is the dog you want in your bed with you like they're like a little fat hot water bottle yeah you know? yeah yeah beep is great like to just hang out with on a, on a, a you know, like a, a winter evening because he yeah. will just like lie right on top of you yeah. and just yep Generally. And my Rue is a cuddle, like the biggest cuddle bug I have ever dealt with. He like climbs in your lap and lies there like a baby. That's Beeper. And you like mm-hmm. got to cuddle him. And he, we have puppy cuddle time every morning and he insists on it. Like you don't get a choice in it. <laughs> I'll have my lap, my laptop on my lap, like trying to work. And he's just like, like oh, okay, yeah. I'm putting a laptop on top of you then. Cause I need to get work done. I'm sure he doesn't mind. <laughs> he doesn't. As long as he's touching you. Yep. So with the, um, with the rescue that yeah. you've started, are you... Do you specifically go out and rescue senior dogs? How how is that working? We work with seniors. Um, At this point, we are so close to filing our 501c3, but have not yet done it. We have this bad habit of getting enough money to pay for the filing and then using it to rescue a dog. (laughs) You know the easy filing is... It's still... It's still money that you could spend It's still money that we could spend on. Yeah. yeah. But um, what we have primarily taken in are owner surrenders so it's usually word of mouth someone knows someone and it's almost always someone who's passed or gone into hospice or assisted living and their family has a dog that they either don't want or can't care for Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of what we've done is is outreach with the families too to kind of oh that's nice make sure that they don't it's they're not giving up my uncle's dog i'm not taking him to the pound this is a loved animal and i'm doing something good for them and we make sure that they still see photos of them as long i mean most people don't need that forever most people but they want to know that they have a good home yeah so um because for a lot it's like their last connection like i have a a cousin mm -hmm. who um sadly a year and a half ago uh was in an accident and um his car went off a a ravine in arizona and he he died um and the only thing that my my aunt and uncle have i mean not the only thing they have memories and he has children and things but they don't see them but they were taking care of his lab puppy and so it was like well at least they had that and i mean they're they're keeping him but you know, it's like you still have that connection. So that's one more connection that people have. And when they have to, right. to let go let of it, go, it, it's it hard be really because traumatic. it's like that may be a stage of grief where they may not have grieved as much when the person died as they do when they have to frequently give yeah. up that Very animal. Frequently. Yep. So we we try and be really respectful of that and, and make sure that people still have the connection to the animals. I have um, Emma who's with mm-hmm. me, was actually an owner surrender. Her her family has had some tremendous problems with health. That just, and they have a toddler, and they had Emma, who has um, a, a bladder disorder. 
Mm. She she just pees a lot all the time, pretty much. We Does have she wear little, puppy diapers. She, uh, she wears little onesies. <laughs> <laughs> She's adorable. <laughs> it's true. That's so cute. Um, but. And she make looks sure kind that of like a little chubby house elf or something. She, she does. Like yeah. And we make sure that her family gets lots of pictures of her and updates. Uh-huh. And almost every family that we've worked with, I am still friends with, uh, at least on Facebook, and they can see the pictures of their animals. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put my nonprofit lawyer hat on. Get your filing done as yes, soon as ma'am. possible, so people can write you big checks. I know. I know. That's that's okay. our that is. Gotta that is that. the plan for this year. I think last year, the first year was just, I'm going to start a dog right. rescue. Right, I'm going to do this. And last year it was like, oh, oh, wow, we really can do this. This is this is really going to work. And, and oh, hey, we're actually kind of good at it. And this year is the year where we get your shit in order. We get our shit in order. Yeah. We get our paperwork filed. Um, we are, I have one foster that's currently open, and that's not me. <laughs> um, so... By taking myself out of the foster pool, mm-hmm. I'm opening my rescue time to just to that. doing more. Right. Yeah, more and administrative actually, we're meeting stuff. tomorrow. We're having our, our first board meeting of the year to discuss just so that. So excellent! You have a board. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, we are so a state our, nonprofit. We're just you're not a, a non, right. So a right. non so and, and people confuse this. So I'm going to explain it. A nonprofit in the state of Michigan means absolutely nothing in terms of tax exempt status. Mm-hmm. So all that means is that you are a corporation that does not plan on making a profit. That doesn't mean you can't pay people if you if you can get revenue. Wouldn't great, you can lovely. pay people. <laughs> um, but it means that you don't operate like uh, a Ford for profit for shareholders right. or for the you know individual business owner. To be tax exempt, usually under state law, even you have to have the federal tax exempt status, right. which is an IRS filing. And so sometimes people will, um, and I've, I've dealt with these, so I'm, I'm not lecturing to you. I'm no, just I'm generally for our tons of listeners. <laughs> if you um, if you only file a, a nonprofit state of Michigan corporation, I've had clients who have said, oh, well, we're a, non-pro- we're a tax exempt organization. I'm like, no, Ooh, no, you're not. No. <laughs> you are not. So, um, right. so that, that, IRS filing is the next step, and it's an essential step. Some of the tax changes may change whether or not people want to write checks, but frankly, a lot of people like are happy to get the little letter saying this is tax exempt. But unless right. you itemize it doesn't your taxes, really... it doesn't really matter. Right. So my view is that most people are just going to write checks because they love dogs or right. they love children, yeah, well, um, you know, whatever. You know, they're still going to be generous because the generosity is. Like the the tax the tax deduction is a perk, but it's not the reason that most people support the, the charities that they support. The reason that we need to do our five hundred one state three, there's a couple. One is that a lot of other rescues and shelters will only partner with the five hundred one c three. So right now we're doing exclusively owner surrenders, partially because I don't have pull privileges. There are a couple shelters you need that to be will a C3. let you. Yeah. yeah, there are a couple shelters that will work with a well vetted. No pun intended. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like rescue it. that's not nonprofit, but most of them won't. So I'm in the and process of this right now, actually. With I'm a partner in a doggy daycare down in Austin, Texas, oh, cool. um, with a friend of mine from elementary school and high school. And we just started a, a 501c3, but it's a, a farm sanctuary. Oh, cool. And it also, uh, she's doing all of this. Chris, you're amazing. She, I think she's back from Puerto Rico, but she just went to Puerto Rico to um, do... Um, spaying and neutering mm-hmm. of cats and dogs in Puerto Rico. In, nice. in a day or two, they did 400. She's oh. there with um, one of the guys from the Jackass TV show, Steve-O, who yeah. um, was really involved in... He, he rescued a dog from the streets of Peru and really got into it. Apparently got his own vasectomy to support the dogs. <laughs> but, um, whatever right, it takes, yay, whatever. Okay. Um, but so one of the things that we are doing is with the, the farm sanctuary, one of the things that Chris does is she goes around to local veterinary clinics and stuff and gets supplies to then take to third right. world. I want to say third world countries. That's less privileged countries um, <clears throat> where there are a lot of street dogs. Yeah. And so she brings medical supplies and things like that. That's so that amazing. they can take care of these dogs because they're usually a couple of people who are just like good hearted people who are out on the streets feeding the dogs and making sure they're taken right. care of. And, you know, if one of them gets sick or injured, it's all on them to take care of the, the dogs. So um, and then the other thing is we've 
the farm sanctuary part, she's rescued some some animals in the Houston area after the flooding. Um, and so we've got some potbelly pigs and goat puppies and things like that. <laughs> um, and so she wants to bring in um, people with disabilities to work with, you know, like um, autism and uh, PTSD and things like that to work with yeah. the animals. Um, but I'm saying all of that because people who listen have heard this over and over again. Um, so we're going through the same process and, you know, I had to do the C3 and right. get the board together and all of that. So not only do I deal with it from a client perspective, I'm dealing with it from a personal perspective. And it's right. like, we got people who want to write checks. And the other thing is if you, if there's a foundation out there who has as their mission, there one of these things, a lot. they will not do anything if you do not have a C3 right. status. And the reason for that is because they have to keep very tight records if they're giving to an individual right. or a business. It's to show that, that what they've given the money for is going to their exempt purpose. Right. But if you hand them a determination letter from the IRS that says you're a C3, they just put it in their file and that's all they have to do. Yeah. Right. So typically foundations like Kresge or Mott, whoever, uh, they will only donate to organizations that have a C3 determination. Right. There is a lot of grant money out there specifically for senior dog rescue. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and they're, my understanding is that, that there generally aren't enough people working in senior dog rescue to take mm -hmm. it all. Now, have you, do you know of silver, about Silver Muzzle? I love Silver aren't Muzzle. Aren't they great? I love, I love uh, Silver Muzzle. And then here locally, if you know, um, oh, brain, where are you? <gasps> NBS is, NBS mm. Animal Rescue is amazing. And they're, they're, they're local and they are, not technically a senior and special needs dog rescue, but they are primarily small breed senior and special needs. Oh, really? And they, okay. they are absolutely one of my favorite rescues ever. They okay, just I'll do have amazing work. I've seen a lot on Silver Muzzle Up, which is up north in the Traverse yeah. City area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, sounds like you could use some volunteers for various things. Always. So <laughs> we always fostering? use volunteers. We definitely need fosters. We always need fosters. Um, the rescue. I mean, I, I don't know if any everyone knows what all is involved with fostering. Basically, you love the dog, and you provide and it you a have safe. To give it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but then we give you another one. It's like a revolving uh, door of new dog. It's like those clothing <laughs> things where you like ship yeah, it and then you ship it back. Like your Winnie <laughs> Bee subscription, but for dogs. <laughs> Adorable older dogs. No, but we provide all the vetting and the. I mean, and honestly. Because we're working with seniors, hospice fostering is a thing, and it's yeah. a, it is a we need. We did that for a Rottweiler that was found in a home down in Allen Park where somebody yeah. had been evicted or whatever, and they left their damn dog in the house. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And he was probably 9 or 10, which is at the end of a Rottweiler's yeah, life. Pretty, pretty long for yeah, a Rottweiler. So we had him for about a year. Mm -hmm. um, it, was it was tough because we knew, you know, we knew that he was going to go, but, yeah. he, but we also knew that he had a great last year. Right, know. and that is... You know, dogs, they do remember to some extent, but, but they don't remember in the yeah. way people do. They're, they're very in the moment. So a dog that is happy now is happy forever. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. And he had, he had a good time and he had fun. And his last weekend, um, you know, we took him up north and he got to hang out at a cabin of a friend of ours. And, and then he came back like and it was time like we just knew he just, you know yeah. it was like he just declined rapidly he had his time he yeah. had his moment he had what he needed the other thing that people who do fostering should know is that um basically mileage and dog food and all of that if mm -hmm. they pay for it is just like making a charitable donation so once they can we're a 501c3. That. <laughs> once you're a 501c3 once you're a 501c3 yeah <laughs> then it is all deductible yeah um so our, our long-term goal and i'm um, this is pretty far out into the future but our long-term goal is to I mean, are you familiar with the ferndale cat fay yes okay we had oh, yeah. a, a we little had bit on didn't we I, I wasn't here we it's did. a little bit like the cat fay but not quite what i would love to have is a community art space that also has a rotating group of senior dogs that live there people come in they do art projects we have workshops we do things that bring in revenue for the rescue and I can just go in and like and cuddle dogs. And you can dogs. just go and cuddle dogs. Oh Maybe we'll gosh. adopt some dogs out that way. Maybe we'll just socialize the animals. 
Mm -hmm. Maybe we just educate some people about how fun an older animal can be to be around. They're great. So they open your mind up a little bit. And they're way more interesting and energetic than people think, as yeah. it as my experience with sleeping dogs. My 10-year-old right. female right. Rottweiler is has turned into a nut in the last year because we got a puppy. So she's crazy. Yep. And she's and I'm like, sh you know, as a Rottweiler, I'm like, 10 years, she's going to die any time. And she's like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. We're going to play. Yep. Um, yeah. So and the other thing is senior dogs, depending on the breed, I mean, a nine-year-old beagle is not. Really, not a really senior. I mean, old, that's like no. halfway through, just over halfway through their life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I've had, all of my beagles have lived until 15, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our, our cutoff for a, a large dog is eight. Mm -hmm. um, for a chihuahua, it has to be at least nine, but yeah. we prefer closer to like 11. Right. You know, <laughs> right. live forever. They do. You know, and uh, um, I just placed Buster Wilson, who is now Elvis. Who is, uh, oh, he's now Elvis. He's now Elvis because of his little waddly walk. Okay, that makes um, sense. Yeah, right. He was a dachshund mix. Uh, uh, he went to a fantastic family in Canada. But um, Buster is 14. And aside from his wobbly walk, shows Nothing. no signs of slowing down at all. He just, he goes in spurts now. I imagine as a puppy, he was constant. Constant. <laughs> and now he goes and then he sleeps. And then he goes... Oh, that's and basically a beagle life anyway. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, so. They sleep a lot. Yeah, We put in a camera beautiful. in the house because I was like, I wonder what the dogs do when I'm not home. <laughs> they freaking sleep. It's very boring. Yeah, it's yep. yeah, the, um, the least interesting so documentary ever. How would people <laughs> contact you if they want to volunteer All of in our any way? I assume... through our Facebook page. Okay. Because I assume you could also use help grant writing. Oh, yeah. Taking yeah. donations of All food, of that sort blankets, of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Want to walk a dog? Anybody want to walk Ooh, a dog? dog <laughs> you know, when I was at MSU uh, as a student at their veterinary clinic, you used to be able to check out dogs, which was great. When you were an undergrad and you missed your dog from Aww. home, you take your student ID and drop it off. And they had like resident <laughs> greyhounds that were used for um, blood transfusions and yeah. stuff. You could go check out dogs and walk them around campus and then check them back in. They Where do did that. they stamp? No, yeah, they they oh, just kept oh, okay. your ID okay, until you fine, came back, fine, 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 and fine, then fine. you needed it because you also used your ID to get into the cafeteria. <laughs> right, I was going to say you needed that because that meant yeah. food. Yeah. Right. So anyway, your Facebook page. Yeah. Um, Facebook slash Make Art Rescue Dogs. Make Art Rescue Dogs. Nice. Yep. Facebook. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's us, Sleeping Dog Studio. And we're, like I said, we're still very, very small, but we're growing. But you're going to grow, especially yeah. once you get that, that IRS paperwork in. Yep. So let's talk about your art. Oh, dear God. Okay. What do you, what what medium do you <laughs> use? All of them. All of them. So All of them. pottery, paint. Okay, I don't do pottery. You're okay. Right. <laughs> She's like, the first thing you said, never mind. No. That's the one. No. No, um, I, I'm also a terrible weaver. Um, <laughs> not, no, yeah, I don't know. I am. Um, I just don't even want to even think about a loom and dealing with exactly. that kind of shit. Exactly. It's too much equipment. Right. Yeah. Um, um, a lot of mixed media. Type a lot stuff. of mixed media. Uh, back when I was exhibiting often, which I don't really anymore, most of my work was in mixed media collage, small scale, um, uh, and used to make uh, basically little icons kind of things. They were very small and funny, um, but not... Uh, God, it's hard to describe art. Words, bleh. <laughs> um, it's hard to describe visual art. Right. Verbally. Words, yeah. Right. But, um, so when you say icons, are you talking about like the little religious, yeah. like the, where you would see like the Jesus and gold foil, or the saint and gold yeah, foil? Yeah, that little kind of icon sort of But it of was things. kind of like a quirky take on yeah. that style. Yeah. Um, I had a, a whole series that one of my friends dubbed the Underwear series. Okay. That were... Um, I thought you were going to say Underworld. Underwear. No. Okay. Underwear. <laughs> underwear. It was, it was mostly um, ancient sculptures with modern day foundational garments painted on them holding different objects. So, um, yeah... <laughs> This sounds like something we would be interested in. That does actually <laughs> say sound foundational like something garments. we might want to. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, you know, okay. not not attractive foundational garments. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly tidy whities Oh, well. Okay, now I'm horrified. Now you're back to <laughs> Underworld. It's the underwear <laughs> Underworld. So, you know, um, uh, you know, a, a Minoan snake goddess wearing a sports bra and holding fish. 
Okay. Do you have, do you have photos of any of this? Yeah. Because we would like to post oh, yeah. some of that. Too. Yeah. Yes. I, I did a whole series of gerbils. Um, a, a whole <laughs> series of gerbils. Yeah, a whole series Live of gerbils. gerbils or? N- uh, no, <laughs> collage gerbils. Uh, okay. The black magic gerbil. Um, the gerbil. Oh the gerbil love thief. So yeah. you're making me think of, okay, so I don't do movies that much, but I do a lot of Twitter and um, podcasts. Yeah. So have you seen, and I just saw this on Twitter, so I don't know. I know that there's a website for it, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, the birds with the funny name. Somebody does like, uh, I think they're just paintings of birds, but then they have oh, funky names. The, oh, oh, yes. You know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah, where they're like really complex, but they're like, yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of, they go it with a lot of pathos and bathos in the names. Like, you know, they're long-winded descriptions. They're really long-winded descriptions. I, I have the link somewhere. Right, yes. like, and it's like, there's like a bird that's going like, you know, like eyeballs out, like, and, and the title is something like crazy. Some of them are shorter, but some of them are like a full sentence description. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I thought at first you were talking about the pictures where there's like, you know, a pretty little bird that'll say like, "I preen for Satan." Oh God! But uh, those are good, but that's a different artist. But yes, similar. I saw. I saw recently that they're, they're, they're very good quality images of birds, and the thing that makes them stand out. I mean, they're pretty work. I mean, right. it's, it's good work. But, but, but it's thing, really the titles. It's the titles. That yeah. right. I, I'll find that link. Fine, if you it can was, find that link. It, you've got a lot of stuff recently. to post this week, Nick. Yeah, oh God, <laughs> Sorry. Yes. That's okay. That's okay. I, 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 well, I'm going up to Flint tomorrow, but like maybe maybe in the evening. In I your copious free time. That. So, yes. um, Rena, we have about five minutes left, but yeah. uh, are you still exhibiting? Uh, you said you don't n- really not, anymore? Not really. Not really. I've been working with um, Kathy Koja and Nerve Productions. So I've been doing mostly, um, aside from like my wholesale line and my illustration work and my freelance everything, I've been channeling most of my creative energy into um, theatrical installations and costume design for our productions. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, so, so aside from all of this aside stuff, from you're else also doing this doing. other thing and this. So I have yeah, questions, yeah. though. Let's go. Okay, back go to, fast. Back to the, uh, yeah. Fa- uh, quick, lightning quick, round. Go, go, go. Um, illustration. So you yeah. illustrate books? No, uh, what I've you... been working for the past five years on the same tarot deck. <laughs> oh, that's right. Tarot. I forgot about the tarot deck. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, it's almost six years, I think. But actually. if somebody wanted to hire you for illustrating, yeah, you but would. You would have to actually contact me personally because I don't have a portfolio online because I let my website lapse because it was so out of date. Then that, you're just um, like fuck it. Yeah, I'm just I just start to see from scratch, and then I realized that that would be another project starting yeah. another. So there's just not one. Okay, so you don't have a website, no nope. Etsy store. Or uh, yeah, but like it's that? all just my it's just my wholesale line. What's your wholesale line? Jewelry. Jewelry. She's like, small. meh, jewelry, yeah. whatever. <laughs> stuff you might want to wear. Like, it's some stuff that you wear. Psh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I used to have, I used to do these enormous, elaborate, structural bib necklaces, and I do still have some of them, but I've kind mm. of put all of that energy into building a wholesale line. So if you look right now, it's just all of this very simple, ready to wear, easy giftable okay. things, cool. as opposed to the more creative things that I will get back to. When I have when you have time and you're not doing dog rescue and illustrating and theater installations and costume design and I got you sleep tired. don't you <laughs> I sleep a lot I have to sleep a lot but um, sleep is for the weak and the bored I am weak um yeah so I um I don't understand how people have the energy to do what they do um so if I were going to find your your um your Etsy store. Okay. Where would I find that? Um, the current jewelry line is under Etsy slash Bits and Oddments. And if you look up Divine Iguana. That was it. Yeah, no. Divine Iguana. Divine just Iguana. If you just Google Divine Iguana, you're going to find some pictures of my artwork. Okay. Divine as well Iguana. as like pictures of me and pictures of iguanas with halos. Yeah. And I believe cool. there's actually a Divine Iguana bar. 
Not affiliated. Not affiliated. Because <laughs> you're not. You're not also a bartender slash bar owner. I am not right? also a bartender slash bar owner. Although you so, are sometimes a performer. Yeah, I, I've I've performed as I do burlesque every once in a while. Oh my not god, as much I love as I burlesque. Used to, and um, okay, and now we're at the, the end. And she, chair. Look, she pulls that out. Sorry. Yeah. All yeah. right, we're gonna have to have you back on to talk about that and um a lot more stuff, but. If somebody wanted to get in contact with you about some of your other artwork, divine iguana, how divine iguana, they divine can... iguana. If it's not if it's not associated with the bar, divine iguana is me on every social platform, all over. Okay, it's, it's so it's always if me. I wanted you to illustrate a children's book, I don't I don't have a children's book. I'm if just you, making it if up. If you wanted, I would email you through okay. divine iguana, yeah. like your Etsy site or whatever. I can contact you that way. Yeah, if you like have a children's book with lots of tidy whities. <laughs> I'm your girl. <laughs> Heidi White. Well, I, I, maybe I could start a children's book just based on that premise. You could. Um. So, okay. So Divine Iguana mm-hmm. on anywhere except the bar is not Rena. Yeah. And I think it's um, closed now. But yeah. the uh, Sleeping Dog Studios Sleeping is the Dog rescue. Studio. And anything else we need to know about where you're at, what you're doing? No, but uh, you guys can all cross your fingers because I am doing a Skype home visit to adopt a dog out of Wisconsin at 6.30 tonight, Uh, and it's another Basset Hound. Her name is Trinka, and she's 11, so that is what my world is about today. Oh, we're crossing our fingers for you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You have a lot more to talk about. We uh, an hour is not enough. Sorry, Um, I'm I'm not. I don't compartmentalize well. Oh God, neither do we. Perfectly fine. No, that's that's fully in keeping with the aesthetic. Exactly. So (laughs) I'll let you know the next time I have a line of work that's ready, and I'll be like, Look, I'm doing this thing. No, seriously, if you have anything where you're going to do an installation, or you're um, exhibiting, or you get your C3 status, whatever, that should be, uh, and you want to come back on just let us know sure um we are always interested in uh, promoting stuff going on around town whether that's nonprofits or entrepreneurs or yeah. artists or all of the above and at some point soon uh you know the next month maybe i really want to bring on uh holly hawk from the school of burlesque mm-hmm. so it would be kind of cool Wait. to get like a burlesque stroke Okay, there's a school the of burlesque. Oh, I got a yeah. lot of questions about that, but we oh, have to go. Okay. So I need to, there, I'm going to have a lot of questions about the school of burlesque. But anyway, <laughs> thank you all for joining us today. Sorry, Facebook Live people that we couldn't make our technology work. We'll um, post the video. We'll post the video and everyone have a fabulous week. Um, next week, I believe we have Kelly Fowler on to Sounds about right. talk to us about I assume container. Yes, container housing. structures. Container structures. Yeah. Housing, yep. She's cool. She's cool. So uh we'll talk to her next week. And in the meantime, um everybody stay warm. And here are the vomit spots. Oh, right. There we go. Cool. <laughs>